Hi, it's Natasha. And KC. We are the co-hosts of... Woke and Free! Free. Thank you, thank you, thank you for tuning in to our 37th episode of Woke and Free. If you've been tuning in every week for Woke and Free Wednesday, you know that Woke and Free is all about being real and honest with each other and you. We talk about everything and anything that's important to us, to you, and the world, and nothing is off the table. In this episode, we're talking all about embracing yourself, figuring out who you are on the journey of being an influencer, of just being a person in media, and with specific uh, journey uh, tips and uh, gems being dropped by Brooke of Madam Finehouse. But before we dive deep into this subject, we have a couple of ground rules to cover. First of all, have you subscribed to Woken Free on iTunes, TuneIn, Stitcher, Google Play, YouTube, SoundCloud, and iHeartRadio? If not, come on now, share the love with us by subscribing. We greatly appreciate your support for the show. Of course, what's next? Have you shared an episode with a friend or family member? If not, please share, share, share away. We greatly appreciate it. And then if you want to talk to us on social media, don't be shy. You can definitely find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Woken Free. And if you haven't reviewed an episode of of several episodes that we've had so far, we greatly appreciate your feedback. So you can give us your thoughts on iTunes, TuneIn, Stitcher, Google Play, YouTube, SoundCloud, and iHeartRadio. And of course, you'll find Woken Free on all of our platforms by going to WokenFree.com. Each week, we like to share a little bit about us before we dive into the topic for the episode. Last week, we shared what's our favorite way to unwind and distress. This week, we're going to share the best joke that we've been told. So that's actually like a really hard question. So my answer is pass. Uh (laughs) That was the joke. I feel sad for you. Man, that's a really short punchline too. It's just like pass. I'd say you got to get a new career, comedian. They told uh, that joke. Yeah, like that, that's the joke? Or you're, are you just saying you don't have an answer to this question? I, yeah, you know, I, I think that the best jokes that I've been ever, I, I ha- personally haven't been told. I think I've listened or heard them be told by the greats like Kevin Hart or, uh, you know, uh, Latifah. But those, but, some of those jokes um, are so long, though. I mean, yeah, <laughs> to so go I know, through it, it's like a whole story and stuff. I, you know, if you, if this question was posed to us at like age eight, maybe I would have some type of knock knock nonsense to share. But at this point, my answer is pass. <laughs> All right. So uh, there's a lot of jokes that I that come to mind when I think of like the best joke told, but I can't remember all those jokes. So I'm just gonna go to like the most recent one that I heard. Okay. And it was from these dads that were telling jokes to each other, trying to get each other oh, to laugh. Oh yeah. So they had they had some good ones. I don't remember the best one, but I remember this one. So this is the one that I'm just gonna say because I don't know the other ones, but they had there was there was a few that were good. So you should check that out when you get a chance. But I'll just give you a taste of one of them. So there's the joke then. Mm-hmm. What did the pirate say at his retirement party? R, I'm off duty. I don't like. R, I'm eighty. That's terrible, Khalil. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's bad, right? <laughs> That's the best joke you've No, been. that's not the best one. That's the only oh. one I remember, though. Okay. I mean, there was another one. Oh, there was... All right, what did... Okay, here, here's a good one. What did what did the Crip Bumblebee say to his, um, his homie? Do I look like a hoodlum to you? <laughs> oh, no. What, oh, what do you call a Crip Bumblebee? That's what it is. Because... Oh, yes. <laughs> that one, they did that That's joke. actually even worse yeah, than no, the first one. It's a little worse. <laughs> I think we're going down a bad spiral. I think we, we need to abort, abort mission. <laughs> oh, you don't think it can get better? Uh, not at this rate. There was, no. there was two good ones. I don't remember them. But Definitely those... keep your day job, sir. No, these aren't mine. These are their jokes. And these are jokes I heard. If I was to tell you a joke, if I, it would be the best one that was ever made on the planet. There goes the Leo. Yes. <laughs> Stroke that man. If I was yes, actually, yes, yes. but I would have to construct this joke. I'd have to sit down and I have to do my research and make sure it's the best joke that's ever been told. No beep, Sherlock. <laughs> <laughs> so that's not a joke. It's a joke because it made you laugh. Ha ha ha. No. I'm so funny. 
You didn't even say what the best joke you've been told. So pass. Grime. <laughs> pass. That Hard is, pass. That is really a messed up thing you've done. I told two jokes, and I even have knock-knock jokes. And I'm sure everyone listening from the Woken Free Nation would have said, hey, he should have passed, too. <laughs> <laughs> it is just a hard pass, guys. Pass, pass, pass. I don't know. Uh, but with that, moving on to the next segment, uh, <laughs> I think we should definitely share a little bit more about who Brooke of Madam Finehouse is. She is a model, a blogger, U.S. Army combat veteran, and recruiter. She was once described as Miss Piggy meets rapper Nas, which is a very interesting uh, kind of image that comes to mind. Uh, <laughs> she is equally likely to break out into song or dance, sometimes both, as she is to share her secrets to a great cover letter. Brooke has walked New York Fashion Week and model for Smart, Glamour, Gwinnaby, Dia and Co., as well as other many other brands. And she's a former roller derby jeer- cheerleader and uh, occasional cosplayer. She aspires to bring personality and nerdiness to her modeling and HR uh, roles. Very, very uh, interesting. I, I, I adore Brooke. She is someone that I have enjoyed working with. She's someone who I think really works on having interesting content out here. So I'm really excited that she's able to share her story with the Woken Free Nation. Hey, Brooke, how are you? I'm good, how are you? We're doing good here. Absolutely. So we like to start off our interviews with a personal share. And on this episode, that personal share will be, what's the best joke you have ever been told? (laughs) Oh, man. I am terrible at jokes. I'm one of those people, like, it takes me, like, weeks. And then I'm just like, oh, my God, that was so funny. I get it. (laughs) Weeks? Um, (laughs) I, yeah, I'm terrible at joke. I don't know. Um, knock, knock joke, maybe? No, those don't, those never, never process. Um, let me see. Um, I don't know. I mean, I guess, like, I'm, I guess my, my humor, I have meme humor. Mm-hmm. I feel like I, I was born just in time for that. I mean, I'm a little bit on, I guess, on the older side now. Now that my child understands memes, I feel a bit old. But um, <laughs> I, <laughs> um, I don't know. Just the my favorite are the like Harry Potter memes. All of the like the running inside jokes. Um, I'm definitely an inside joke person, as opposed to a, a knock knock joke or other random humor joke. Uh, Sorry, uh... I don't have a better answer for that. <laughs> <laughs> Well, maybe that was the joke. There is no funny yeah. joke out there. Yes, yes, Kanye humor. I will take oh, that. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, wow. That's All right. awesome. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, since we started with something so deep, we'll we'll keep on that, uh, that deep train and uh, keep it moving on to, uh, I guess, just having first people learn a little bit more about your uh, military experience. So I wanted to know, or rather we wanted to know, uh, you know, what were some of the things that you were thinking about that helped motivate you to join the armed forces? I mean, given how much we see about the issues that our vets have when after they sacrifice their lives for America and American free soil, uh, you know, they really struggle with getting uh, what they need after that that tenure with <laughs> on behalf of the country. Uh, you know, why do you think people are still continuing to sign up and, and risk their lives despite, you know, it seems like kind of a little bit of a lack of respect and, uh, you know, proper treatment that, that our armed forces receive after the fact? So I feel, at least from my experience, I can't speak for everyone. Um, so I joined because I felt like I didn't have too many other options. So um, at the time, you know, it was myself, there was, with my family, there were six of us living in a two bedroom apartment. Um, I was sleeping on the floor. Like I was, you know, fresh out of high school. Um, I had started college and then like, I started to see what the numbers look like for like debt and student loans. Mm-hmm. And I was like, you know what, this is probably not what I want to do right now. Cause like, I want to feed myself. Like, let's focus on that first. Mm-hmm. Um, so I joined just kind of out of like, you know, why not? Um, mm-hmm. And then I saw when I entered, I was surrounded by other people. I think there was one person who came from what, you know, I guess people call 
comfortable background. You know, everyone pretty much was more or less in my situation. It may have looked a little bit different, but basically everyone was just trying to either get out of where they came from because it wasn't safe or because they couldn't afford to live or something of that sort. Um, and I find that that was definitely a big demographic um, mm-hmm. in the military. So I don't really think, like, I can't speak for anyone else, but I know I didn't think about any of that stuff when I went in. I was like, I just, I want to eat. I want to have a mm. paycheck. Um, I want to do something different. At the time, I was very delusional, and I thought that there was, like, this huge life outside of New York City. Mm-hmm. Um, and I thought I was going to experience something different, and then I left New York. And I was like, oh, okay. I thought there'd be more diversity outside of New York. Mm. Not the case. Interesting. So you don't really feel like you did maybe as much research in in kind of the the thinking about the decision as to like what happens after you join, but just you needed an outlet and you needed kind of a, a, a reaching hand and you just took it. Right. Um, I had kind of toyed with the idea in... Uh, I want to say it was like October or November of 2006, and I had signed my contract in January 2007. Wow. Like, it was just that quick. Um, If I was willing to change the job that I wanted, I could have been out within two weeks of me signing the contract. Mm. Wow. Very quick turnaround process. Interesting. Okay. All right. What were the biggest challenges you faced while being in the Army? And after coming home as well? Um, I found that being a woman and being a person of color, um, as well as also being from a highly populated area, um, I never fit in anywhere, no matter how hard. You know, that's one of the things that your recruiters tell you when you go in. They're like, just put your head down and just blend in. Yeah. I'm in New York City, and I still don't feel like I blend in. So being around people who are from small towns, I definitely didn't blend in to the best of my yeah. ability. Um, but, you know, just there's always a disadvantage of being a woman because no matter what, like, I would consistently, you know, beat out some of the men in my units at push-ups and sit-ups. But, you know, my runtime was always slower. So that was, like, the thing that they focused on. Um, and then being a person of color, you know, there's – there's no different like our current political climate like that was not a surprise to me because that's what I experienced the whole five years I was on active duty um I have been called some names that I didn't even know were offensive because they just didn't make sense to me because I don't see that or I didn't see that in New York City you know so um and these are people who were in my unit these are people who were supposed to be watching my back the same way I watched theirs so um there was a lot of that. And then again, just being from a city where I have access to museums and culture and all kinds of things, you know, people didn't know like what a falafel was. And I was confused. I was like, what do you mean you don't know what a falafel is? Everyone knows what a falafel <laughs> is. Um, so it, I mean, I unintentionally alienated myself because things that I thought were common knowledge were very much not. Interesting. So then does that mean that, so given kind of the, I guess, the tensions that you were dealing with in the Army, did you really feel like there was a brotherhood and sisterhood when, you know, you're out there and, you know, you got your lives are at stake? Did you, even though they were speaking poorly, like people spoke spoke poorly to each other, did you guys still have moments of like camaraderie and you would come together if there was an, a bigger threat or you just always felt on edge from internally and externally? I always felt on edge um, because I was really that alienated. Um, But there, I did see it in other people, you know, where people would give each other a hard time, but then like to some degree, at least, it would like be pushed aside temporarily. But um, there was just not a whole lot of, uh, for again, they say that, you know, when you join the military, either you get, put in a great unit and you love it and you want to be in the military forever or you end up stuck in a unit where you're just like it's time to go I got to get out um and they always say that your next unit will be better but I got two back-to-back where that were not so Mm -hmm. great (laughs) so it was time to get out at that point wow okay in addition to being a, a veteran, uh, you are also, you're a lot of different things. We'll talk about all yeah. of them, but uh, you're a social media influencer, you're a blogger. Uh, you know, what What was that story like uh, as to how you decided you wanted to 
put yourself out there more in media and start to influence how people think about fashion, about uh, their lives, dot, dot, dot? Um, I think part of it also comes from, you know, I've just never felt like I fit in anywhere. So, you know, even small things like I can, I feel like I can never have a surprise party because my friends are like so widely spread out and they're like all over the place. Um, and I felt, I guess it came up that that's just a great way to affect and reach different groups of people by allowing myself to be the center of attention, which is something that I shied away from um, mm -hmm. after my experience in the military because I felt like I don't want to be that target anymore. Um, so I allowed myself to like kind of slip into a, you know, hiding behind things as much as possible type situation. Um, but once I decided that, you know, I kind of got my groove back for a lack of better words. Um, mm -hmm. And I just decided to go for it. Like the same kind of snap decision, you know, what's the worst that can happen that led me to join the military in the first place. Um, I just kind of found that. And I feel like that's a key piece of my personality. It's just kind of taking those random decisions. I'm known for being the person where, you know, my friend was like, oh, hey, I want to go skydiving for my birthday. You're coming with me. Like, people know mm. that I'm that person. Like, I want to do something crazy. You're coming with me. Um, mm. So I kind of felt like being able to document that, and I have a very strong sense of self. Like, mm. I know what works for me and what doesn't work for me, and, you know, doing things that other people do. Sometimes I feel like an imposter, so I feel like I can draw a very clear line around those things. Mm -hmm. um, I just kind of felt like I had my own space. I don't do what other people do. Like, I can admire what other people do, but that's not something that I need to do. Okay. And just friends. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> and uh, just for the Woken Free Nation listening, uh, what would you say are the type of content that you particularly love to uh, put out there and share with the world? Um, I like the deep, uncomfortable stuff. Like, you know, when you have a conversation with a friend and you're just like, I wouldn't have told anyone else this. Like, I'm a little bit embarrassed, but because I love you, I'll tell you. Mm -hmm. um, I'm that kind of oversharer. So in upcoming content, I'm sure there are people that are like, dude, we don't need to know all of that. Like, mm -hmm. but that's the space I like to sit in because I feel that's where people learn the most, you know, because there's mm -hmm. these things that people are afraid to talk about. I don't have those limitations. I'm comfortable talking about everything. Mm -hmm. And you don't mind, like, the, do you ever get, like, backlash from people or just, you know, haters talking crap? You don't mind hearing that? Or how do you deal with um, that? I haven't really seen a lot of it, but I don't know if that's either because it doesn't exist or because I don't care. Like, I haven't, I don't, I guess I kind of, I don't want to say I live with blinders on, but I'm so focused on moving forward. Like, always forward is one of my, like, personal mottos. So I don't have time to, like look to the side or look down or behind me or whatever else is going on. I just kind of do my own thing. Like if I feel confident walking into something, I'm not going to suddenly not feel confident because someone else doesn't like it. Mm. I don't know. Okay. And when it comes to uh, being a content creator, uh, how would you say, you know, what's the best way or the keys to finding your niche? I think it's really whenever I do anything, even if it's like dressing myself in the morning, um, I always like, is this really me? Like I, ha I have to talk myself through it. Um, I come up with a lot of ideas and a lot of things I like to do, but then I have to sit there and I'm like, do I like this because it's me or do I like this because I saw this idea and I just kind of want to put my own twist on it and I think it'd be cool. Like this, there's a very... I have a very thorough like sifting process to make sure that what comes out the other end is really 100% Brooke and not kind of like, you know, putting a filter on someone else's stuff. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Do you feel like you see a lot of that in, in social media or in the content that, that's currently out there, like people not necessarily being as true to themselves and just kind of putting out content that is like in line with their brand but you don't necessarily really know who's the person behind the brand yes um mm -hmm. and i'm always very like i like to follow those people because for me it almost becomes like a challenge like those people are the people that i follow the most i'm like i want to see you know 
what they're about. Like on the small, like, you know, they do like an Instagram story of like the personal life. And I find that that's what I pay attention to. Like, I don't really, you know, everything else. I'm like, oh, look, it's another post by this brand that everyone else is doing. Like, this person looks great but I want to learn about them. Like, you know, when Mm. you find out like your favorite influencer has like a family and they, you know, they're a parent and I'm just, those are the things that I'm fascinated about. I want to know about the person. Like, I don't, you know, bodies look good in different clothes. That's Mm -hmm. cool. Or, you know, testing different games or different, you know, whatever the brand collaboration may be. Um, I think that there's a lot more room for authenticity. And I think people are very, cautious about the brands Mm -hmm. and i think if that's their route then cool but i'm always interested in getting to know like the actual influencers so like when i meet people in person like i get really excited and they're confused and then Mm -hmm. i'm like but you're awesome like i saw that one time that you were singing in the car and i love that song i don't know you like that i love that too Mm -hmm. um so those are the people who make me who influence me to buy product are people who are themselves as opposed to people who just put out content just to put out content when it comes to dealing with fear what are some of the fears and challenges you've dealt with in your life um i think my biggest fear i don't think i had a lot of fear before i had my daughter um it was just kind of like a i'll just take whatever comes i like to just kind of leap over obstacles even if i trip and fall over the other side i'm still going to try and do it and i'm going to handle it um Mm -hmm. but i've learned that with fear like with my daughter now i realize that there's consequences to things so you know if i make a decision now how will it affect her in a year or two or ten years you know when i think about my blog um you know this is the internet it'll be around forever so how will i feel you know with her reading my blog in Mm ten years from now um So those are the things that I really, you know, I make those decisions with her in mind. And that's really been a big fear for me because I definitely don't want to be one of those parents where my daughter is like, mom, you're so disappointing, you know, or I'm so embarrassed. (laughs) I mean, I'm okay with, you know, I'm okay with embarrassment, but disappointing, not so much. Mm, Um, Interesting. Yeah. But everything else, I kind of feel like, you know, it's very much a, but did you die? You know, I jumped out of a plane last year. I made it out alive. You know, um, and I try to be very thorough when I make a decision. So Mm -hmm. I don't have too many regrets. Do you Uh try to do things that maybe do push the limits, though? Because I I know that sometimes I feel like our parents, right, played it safe on certain things. And, like, now that you're a parent, do you feel like you have that responsibility to show her that, like, no, you can be bolder than the average person. No, you can, you know, embrace your body and not, you know, want to hate yourself because so many people continue to to to, to self-loathe and and to attack and bully themselves. Like, do you find like what type essentially like based on what you're doing, is are you trying to raise a daughter that is like, I guess, even more daring or bolder than you? Or or do you want her to come to this on her own? Like, how does, like, I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. I, is like, I really, I push her to be herself mm-hmm. um, because I see a lot of myself in her when I was her age. Um, but I also grew up in a very different environment where I was told all the time that I was too big, I was too this, you know, my hair looked like this or you know, the clothes that I wore or, you know, the fact that I was too smart for my own good. Like, what what is what does that even mean, you know? So I try to really push her. You know, if she likes something, she'll be like, oh, but then the kids at school are going to think I'm weird. And I'm like, like, do you, do you see me? You see me every day. You know that I'm weird. So what's wrong with being weird? She's like, but you're cool <laughs> weird. I was like, like, it seems different now, but you being cool weird now makes you the cool kid. Like, I'm trying to get her to understand that dynamic because looking back you know the one kid who was into doing something different was like cool if you went about it the right way and mm-hmm, i was like just mm-hmm. when, when you stop paying attention to that that makes you the cool kid so yeah it's it's we're, interesting we're you say that. that yeah Because, you know, it is funny because, like, I think as kids, we all feel so, I guess, self-conscious about, yeah, like, our quirks 
and yeah. and our quote unquote weirdness but you're absolutely right like it's our weirdness that usually sets us apart and and makes us the cool adult and that and it's that quote unquote weirdness that makes that millionaire or even billionaire companies right so i think you know it's it's and everything feels so more intense as a kid like you know like i i tell Khalil all the time like he's like oh you didn't do this and i'm like i didn't have friends like yes, <laughs> exactly child. Exactly. Like, and it's, a, yeah. it's such a weird thing to go through because like now like with you know so much social media like I am friends with people who gave me a hard time in school mm-hmm. and I'm just like oh that's right that's what you're doing nothing cool mm-hmm. just glad that we cleared that out moving along you know like yeah, 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 nice yeah. perspective as terrible as that sounds like that's also my reality check where like me staying true to myself even though I stumbled and fell on my face several times staying true to myself worked out for me because I look around and I'm just like you made fun of me for everything and you have no personality it's like I am glad that I went through what I went through because <laughs> I came out the other side you know I'm you know I like myself now not perfect I there's always room to grow but I can look in the mirror every day and be like you're pretty rad you know I get to yeah. be cool mom and I don't have mm-hmm. to like be the trying hard cool mom because I'm just mom who likes herself. Yeah, it is. And you know, it's funny because mm-hmm. the minute you stop like disliking yourself and the minute you start to embrace, you know, all of the parts that, you know, why you're so awesome. It's like you just like send this like ripple effect into the universe where you just get continuous affirmation of why you're mm-hmm. rad and why you're cool. And it's and kids don't understand it. They're just like, I don't know what it's going to take to like get, but I, I remember just everything felt so intensely heavy and mm-hmm. painful and it didn't have to be that way. It literally, right. I, you, you could have just woken up and just been like, I'm the, you know, I'm just dope as dope AF and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, and just keep on moving and people will respond to that. But people, cause people also respond to the opposite of when you walk around cowering and wondering, you know, why am I the victim? Why am I never liked? Mm-hmm. Then people respond to that too. So it's, uh, I don't know. It's so a child. I was just saying that, yeah, that as kids at that time is so awkward and painful. It's rough, man. <laughs> yeah. and it's really hard to watch because like I'm watching my own child go through it and I'm just like no but you're gonna be so cool like you know and around adults like adults love her because they're so fast and they're like man I wish I was that cool as a kid but then when she's around <laughs> other kids like yeah. she's like oh I'm not cool I'm like you're you're almost eight years old and like actual fashion designers think you're awesome and this is what you want to do run with it like don't be concerned what the kid eating his boogers thinks like just go for it <laughs> <laughs> Good point. <laughs> you know, very, very true. But you know what? A part of that also I find is, um, yeah, like making, like growing up, I actually spent more time with adults and kids, and I felt better and stronger when I was with mm-hmm. adults. So yeah, maybe for her, it might make more sense to not, yeah, spend time with these booger eating kids who just can't get their <laughs> life because uh you know at the end of the day yeah like you know she i think also you know because it's interesting to say that i feel like if i had been around doing more things that made me feel empowered like um maybe i wouldn't have been so concerned about the people who did who were actively trying to uh attack who i was you know because Mm -hmm. and and it's hard because you know they have you know eight hours a day they're with these fools um (laughs) you know and so you're just like in this tribe (laughs) of nonsense yeah Yeah. um but you know having her read empowering things. Also, I found affirmation. If if I had known about affirmations as a child, that also, because I love them as an adult. Like I wake up and I say an affirmation, you know, like, right. but it's interesting. So children empowerment, interesting, interesting. Okay. When it comes to like network, I'd like to sh- switch gears a little bit. Um, You know, how have uh, certain people, I guess we talked about the naysayers and stuff, but how has just as a whole, how has people, how have people played a role in your life when it comes to being successful? Because as you know, with the content I put out, like with Justin Romain and stuff like that, that, you know, your net worth is your network. So like agree, disagree. And like, I guess if you do agree, who, like, how did you find your tribe of strong, of a strong network to help you be successful if you feel like it it played a role in your success? Oh, absolutely. I am a firm believer that you don't really do anything by yourself. Mm -hmm. Um, And I feel like I spent a lot of my life just 
thinking that I had to do everything by myself and nobody liked me and I was on my own and boo-hoo. And I think the second that I realized, like, there are people who want to help and it doesn't have to be, like, a one-way situation, you know, like, I help you, you help me. Or, like, if I think someone's great, like, I have no problem, like, you know, giving you, like, a shout-out or, like, you know, screaming someone's praises from the rooftops just because I think they're awesome. Like, it's not like a, hey, if I shout you out, will you do it for me too? Like, I don't, like, that's cool. But I find that the people who are really my tribe are the people who support you no matter what. If people mm-hmm. like what you're doing, they're going to like what you're doing and they're going to support you. Mm-hmm. Um, and I feel like that attitude has, you know, that again, that's one of those things where like once I realized that, I got all of that back. Like, mm. I know people, and I fangirl over my own friends. Like, people leave me comments on my Instagram, and these are people that I hang out with just because I'm like, oh, my goodness, she left me a comment. Like, <laughs> I don't, that doesn't go away just mm-hmm. because I know so many incredible people. Like, just out of the blue, I feel like everyone kind of materialized. And, Natasha, you're a big part of that, too, because I've met so many awesome people through you, and it's really cool to see, like, again, the ripple effect. I'm like, oh, wait, you know that person, too, and that person, you know? And then, (laughs) again, every time I open up social media, and I'm like, oh, you know that person? I've been following that person for, like, six years, you know? Um, And then, again, you know, I mean, also relatively new, I've realized that, you know, everyone's human. Um, Mm -hmm. But it's just really cool to see people who have done this before me and people who have like dug deep and decided to be vulnerable and take that leap. Um, And it's just, you know, I'm a firm believer in what you do for people at some point or another, it will come back to you, even if not the same from the same person or in the same way. Uh Thank you. If you had an opportunity to go back in time and give yourself advice, what age would you go to and what would you tell your past self? Um, that's actually a great question. Um, I think I would go back to probably like junior high. There was this mm-hmm. one boy that I had a crush on and like he was basically the booger eating kid. Now that I look back, he was that <laughs> guy. Um, but I was so convinced like, and he really, like, he must have been going through something at home or whatever, because he was really terrible to me, really terrible to me. Mm. Um, and I wish, like, I had, you know, if I could whisper in my own ear and be like, he eats his own boogers, leave him alone. Like, you know what I mean? Whatever would have, like, moved me from that situation, um, because I feel like that kind of played a role in my, you know, shaky self-worth moving forward. Mm. Um, because I took a lot of those things to heart. And, you know, even now, like, I'm an adult. I'm a, you know, I'm a parent. I'm a wife. And, like, there's sometimes, like, I'll say something, and my husband's like, what are you talking about? Like, no, of course that's not true. You know what I mean? Like, Mm -hmm. and I didn't think at that age that I would have what I have now. So, yeah. Or maybe I just tell myself to push the booger-eating kid, like, off his chair or something. I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> you you know it's funny i was uh i was yeah. on the nina monique show and uh one of the guests katia page uh i think the lipedema queen is her her titling uh she said sit on your oppressor and i don't think i will ever forget that. <laughs> oh my right. gosh i love that <laughs> so uh <laughs> yeah i think i would uh, oh, go man. back to eight and i would say hey tasha sit on your oppressor <laughs> <laughs> that is incredible Wow. It is incredible. When she said it, I was like, Wakanda forever, first of all. <laughs> and then secondly, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yes, 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 yes. That's one way to handle the bullies, right? Sit on your oppressor. <laughs> <laughs> um, what was I going to say? I have a question. So what is something that people don't know about you? Um. So. I tend to be, I I guess my, like, one of my secrets, I don't keep a lot of secrets, but I'm kind of a traditionalist, Mm -hmm. something that I've learned lately with my husband. Like, I tend to be, again, I'm always known as the, you know, I'm the rebel, whether intentionally or otherwise. I just kind of do things my own way. I've always done things my own way. Um, But, like, I'm married now, and I was excited to try on the white dress, and, like, Mm-hmm. just those kind of very basic like I'm 
when I met my husband, one of the first things that came out of my mouth was like, I don't do traditional gender roles. That's not my thing. And it's not. Um, but I'm also kind of to some degree okay with certain things, you know. Um, you know, I haven't had to sit on my oppressor, thank goodness. So um, <laughs> we don't have that issue, which is amazing. But it's just like, I really enjoy that. I'm very maternal. Um, my daughter is at the age where she is sick of it now, um, especially in front of other people. But, you know, like, I just really enjoy a lot of those things. I like being able to take care of home in whatever mm -hmm. fashion it is. Um, and I'm lucky that I get to do that because now I have a partner that does that with me. You know, it's not awesome. just like I'm doing it by myself or, you know, he's doing it, you know, by himself. Like, we work very well together. So, yeah. Um, does that mean you like to do housewife. laundry and, like, cook I and stuff? I love doing and... laundry. Oh, I love doing God. laundry. That's I hate amazing. doing dishes, but I love doing laundry. Really? And again, oh. awesome, because my husband doesn't mind doing dishes, but he does mind okay. doing laundry. And I'm like, I will sit there and fold everything perfectly. Like, I'll just <laughs> sit there and just sniff the clean clothes. I just, oh, wow. folding is so therapeutic to me. I don't know. You're like Michael B. Jordan. He, I think, doesn't he like laundry? Or no, he likes ironing. That's what he likes. Um, uh, wow, this weird. is fascinating. <laughs> you think that's weird, though. Yeah, I say that's no weird. to everything. <laughs> I say no to all of it. <laughs> I don't know. The ironing yeah. kind of seems cool because it's Do like you, really? you take like a wrinkly shirt and you make it all like pristine looking. What and about steaming your face off? I How's steam, that? I steam my clothes. Like I don't yeah, have time steam. to iron. Like you got to plug something in. That's mm -mm. Yeah, yeah, we steam too. Interesting. Wow, that's an interesting. So you're traditional, okay? So you like cooking, or so the the dinner time? You like that five o'clock Sunday dinner thing and flowers, you know, in the house and all that good stuff. Flowers. Huh? So. I, okay, so again, I'm very lucky because my husband is incredible and he's a great, he's definitely the better chef, um, like, by a long shot. Um, I'm like, okay, I can follow a recipe. Like, cool, I can do this. <laughs> and he's just like in there and it's like magic. And I'm like, how did you just put those things? Like, I'm convinced that he's really a wizard. We met on a Harry Potter related <laughs> note, but like, there's a little bit more going on. Because awesome. um, like, sometimes I watch him cook and I'm just like, how did that come out of that? Like, and oh, the same my with my mother-in-law. Like, I'm just kind of like, I follow her around. I'm just like, oh, my gosh, it smells amazing. Like, how did you put these things together? And it makes this deliciousness. I don't get it. Interesting. Um, wow. But I'm totally fine doing everything else. Like, we, you know, we do normal, traditional, like, we, you know, we clean the house together and, like, we sing and dance. Like, just. Aww. It's, that's it's sweet. awesome. That's yeah. So, I would say like the Cosby's, but I don't think as people we can say that nope. anymore. So nope. uh, <laughs> that time Canceled. has passed. That has come and gone <laughs> yeah. by the wayside. Thank you very much, mister. Yeah. <laughs> very unfortunate. Wow. Okay. Well, I think that is lovely. And I tell hubby hello from Woken Free, of course. But then secondly, when's the cooking blog and the TV show coming? So like, let's, you know me, let's get it together, so, guys. <laughs> so, so I'm working on that baby steps um, with him. I'm hoping to, you know, at some point incorporate him into my blog, but I also feel like he likes having his own personal autonomy um, okay. because he's also my default now photographer and, you know, stylist. And that's, yeah, he's, he's definitely my default stylist. He dresses me in the morning. I can't even like, I'll lift the curtain on that one. Um, Oh, if you wow. see me dress up, and I look particularly good on, you know, on Instagram. Oh, nice. That's all he's doing. Oh, um, wow. Very cool. If I leave it to myself, I wear black all the time. So he does colors and things. It's not well, really black can be sexy and chic, right? And sophisticated. It's all about, you know, the, how you style the black and, and you know, you know, the pieces. And, you know, don't discount black. Black is sexy. It's just, you know, but sometimes a pop of color is fun, though. That's cool. Yeah. Very cool. All right. Well, next time we have to do a um, we should do a couple like uh, like a we you should you should join one of our an live outing. streams or or yeah, we can definitely do an outing Ooh. for sure. Yeah. Well, yeah, we should definitely do oh, like yeah. a couple do a live stream. A live stream. Play heads would, up. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Did you guys? Oh, well, yes. You should check out Heads Up. That's a, yeah, fun, that's game. a fun game. Um, we will. Yeah. Okay. So everyone listening, that's gonna be coming. We're gonna do. Couple versus we have to come up with team names or something, guys. I don't know. Uh, Gryffindor versus Slytherin. Okay, guys. Are you guys Slytherin? <laughs> yeah. Are you really? Oh no! No, no, he's not. No, no. I mean, oh. he is evil sometimes, but. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, I'm I'm all in. Um, 
my my daughter's a Slytherin, and actually, again, my husband and I were both Gryffindors. That was the yeah. pickup line. Um, and now, well, so on that know, note, how did you pick your uh, how how did you pick? How did you choose that you were Gryffindor? It was just um, I took the. I mean, I knew deep down because I feel like you know I'm the one who does crazy things like run into the fire to save a notebook or something otherwise <laughs> irrelevant because that's what I do. Um, but I took the Pottermore test on Pottermore.com and I was like, I knew it. But then, like, I knew it, but I didn't know because when I took the test, I knew very little about Harry Potter. My friend wanted me to perform her wedding and her and her husband were really into Harry Potter. And I was like, all right, I guess I'll do it for you guys. And now we have matching Harry Potter tattoos and wow. now Harry Potter mm -hmm. is part of my own love story. So, absolutely. You know. Oh, wow. Harry Potter. And you went and you saw the that play, right? And brought on Broadway. I did. I did. Um, <laughs> I was it? I have to see it again. It was incredible. Um, mm -hmm. The play, when, you know, the script written out was a, a bit underwhelming, as a majority of the Potterheads across the world agreed. Um, mm -hmm. But the way they made that come to life, like, I'm still shocked. Like, I, again, I, I left and I was like, is magic really real? Am I missing out on something? <laughs> Am I a muggle? Like, the way that they just, like, flip things so quick and like I was trying to be very like skeptical and like oh well they moved this and that's how that happens and nope there's some stage magic I could not figure out mm -hmm. wow and you saw part one and part two I heard it's like a uh, what is it like a five hour affair or something right uh it is yes yeah, about five hours not including oh, the wow. intermission nuts yeah. <laughs> nuts, nuts, nuts. <laughs> that's extreme <laughs> Yeah, they say it's but something it's, it's good it. to take kids to because it's like they'll keep them busy or something. But I don't know. Do kid, did you, would your daughter, do you think she would be into it? She's not into it. She just knows that she's a Slytherin and she's over it. And her, <laughs> she's you know, over it. we're just weird nerds because we like Harry Potter. She doesn't get it yet. So. What about Star Wars? Is that more of her speed or not really? <laughs> Try to go down the nerd. <laughs> lane or something yeah i am just throwing everything at her i'm just trying to see what sticks to be very honest with you i'm like star trek like do we have to go there yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh my gosh i can't we yeah we definitely will have to do some content together guys this is too much uh yeah. what was i gonna say so i know you're super busy so what we'll do is uh first of all thank you right for sharing your story on with the woken free nation we greatly appreciate it i know everyone listening is both uh, really intrigued to learn more <laughs> about you and uh, your story so i guess the first will are there any upcoming projects that you're working on that you want to share and talk about and then also what's the best way for people to follow you to support you learn more about you um so my upcoming project there's always a million and one projects i feel like for me it's a matter of which one makes the most progress and which will which has the most potential mm -hmm. um i would like to start a or i'm working on currently a web series um because like i said i i tend to be the maybe not serious but the vulnerable uncomfortable ish conversation type um definitely more serious um, so I want to kind of get like a, a web series going of that on a very like humans of New York note, but also just regular people telling their stories because there's all these incredible people in plain sight with these great backstories that people don't know. Um, and I think that's really what I want to navigate. It's going to be sad. So <laughs> tissues will be needed. I'm going to talk to, I guess, Kleenex for a sponsorship on that one. Um, yes. But yeah, um, and the best way to reach me is definitely uh, Madam Finehouse on Instagram, um, Snapchat, the blog, madamfinehouse.com. Um, I am definitely more responsive on Instagram than anything else. Admittedly, I'm also on Twitter. Is that I, shade I at Twitter? Twitter? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. I'm Madam Finehouse wow. across the board. Okay. Okay. Why shade for Twitter? I like Twitter. I like to, I just, I, I feel like it's very touch and go. Like I'm at the point on Twitter where like, because my interests are all over the place that like, I'm afraid mm -hmm. to like something. Cause then I'm just like, oh my God, they're going to know I like that. And then I'm just kind of like, yeah, you know, like, but then there's also like the, you know, what is, is my employer on there because everything's public, like, you know, mm. you gotta, yeah, uh, okay. gotta navigate those things. I tend to be yeah. all over the map. Can't be a I rebel mean, I... at the day job. 
Yeah, yeah, that that makes sense. I mean, the general rule is everyone's always watching, so yeah. um, <laughs> live within Especially those. Especially when you work in HR. Yeah. yeah yes. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. Well, thank you, Madam Finehouse. Thank you, Brooke. <laughs> uh, you are dope, and uh, we love you. And uh, everyone listening, Woken Free Nation, stay tuned for more from um, from Brooke. We definitely. We've got to explore this Harry Potter obsession a little <laughs> bit more. And uh, we definitely have to do some gaming because yeah. uh, we played Heads Up and it's ridiculous. Uh, and so we definitely need to play with you guys. That would be awesome. Awesome, <laughs> awesome, awesome. Looking forward to it. Thank you. Awesome. I'm Thank looking you. forward to all upcoming Woken Free Wednesdays. You guys are the highlight of the midweek. Oh, Aww, thank you. Thank you. Yes, absolutely. Thank all you right. for your support. Thanks, Rick. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Bye. Take care. Bye, bye. Bye. We are at that time again. It is the coming of our end of our 37th episode of Woke, Woke and, and Free. Free. Okay, so I go up, you go down. I'm not quite sure where we were at with that one. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you needed some more vibrato in your voice, I think. Then we could have gotten it more in harmony. I would say something, but I won't because I... Great been... minds harmonize. Nope, that wasn't what I was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you wanted to say, though. Not quite, Yoda, not quite. <laughs> mm, young one, you want to say something? You really want people to come for you. You just really <laughs> crazy sound right now. What do you mean, come for me? Mm -mm -mm. You think that's how Yoda sounds? No, I didn't say that. Why did you say that was Yoda? Now that's offensive. People that talk that way are supposed to be little green men. Excuse you, who talks that way? People talk that way. There's some people that talk that way in this planet, in this world. So this was quite the episode <laughs> <laughs> talking all about embracing yourself and your journey and, and just kind of owning who you are in this world with Brooke of Madam Finehouse. And if you miss any of it, definitely please rewind, listen to the whole episode. And while you're at it, check out some of our other episodes if you are not up to date with all of the episodes on WokenFree.com. And as per usual, I asked the question, Woken Free Nation knows the answer. Will I leave you hanging for what our next episode will be about? On our next episode, we will be talking about why content creation is a part of fearless living with DJ Johnson. Make sure you follow us on social media to follow along in the conversation. And make sure you tune in next week for Woken Free Wednesday to join the conversation at WokenFree.com. If you would like to be a guest on the show, which we greatly would love to have you, make sure you submit a topic for an upcoming episode and to share how you feel about what we're talking about on our Contact Us page on WokenFree.com, which is W-O-K-E-N-F-R-E-E.com. And I can't stress enough, we're very, very, very active in social and social media. Where are you going to find us? Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, at Woken Free. If you didn't already subscribe, please do. Share the episode and make sure you come back to join the conversation every Wednesday for Woken Free Wednesdays. Get woke, get free. Until next time.